Welcome to this paddle. Today we are in New York, in Manhattan, a very privileged place to play paddle. We are in Hudson Yards Reserve, the most exclusive club I've known. Maybe there are more, but like the LA thing. And we are with Michael Dorman, founder, CEO, co-founder of the New York Atlantics. Thanks for I was having gonna me. say no. Thanks for letting me do the interview. I was gonna say welcome, but it's not welcome. I'm in your place. You're yeah, from here. Yeah, I'm from here. So who you are? Uh, so I, who are you? I, I, <laughs> I, I, I uh, I'm the co co-owner of the New York Atlantics. Um, you know, my partner and I uh, traditionally work in in tech, software, venture investing, and got addicted to paddle <laughs> in about two years ago when the first club opened up in New York. I'd, Never heard of the sport before in my life, but grew up playing tennis uh, okay. and then a little bit of squash. And so the first time I stepped on the court was was addicted and uh, just had to keep learning more and more and more and ended up owning the yeah. New York team. It's the best of both worlds, right? Yeah. You played battle like tennis and squash, everything together, plus the social side. It, it's the most social sport. The community is, is amazing, um, but it, it's addicting to play as well. And how do you go from playing to having a franchise in the Pro Paddle League? Well, it's the dream come true because I get to get on the court with some of the best players in the world. <laughs> so, so very selfishly, it's been uh, very fun from that, that standpoint, practicing with Juan Martin Diaz and, and guys like him. I uh, couldn't yeah. ask for, for anything better than that. Um, but watching our, our team play is uh, a little more stressful than, than playing myself. Yeah, I guess so. because. Recently, we had the, like the first part of the Pro Padel League. I think New York did very well on the first week, and then not that good in the second one, right? Yeah. So, how was your experience? Because it was, it's a new franchise. It's the debut this year. Yeah. Uh, it was a great experience in Miami. I think it was a, a huge success overall with the turnout, the viewership that we got online on YouTube. Um, you know, our team did did quite well the first week. We got third place. We struggled a little bit in the second week. Um, it's okay. We're, yeah. we're in good shape. You know, try for you know, August. Yeah, for August is 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 the main you know goal to, to show out well in LA and then you know get to the championship in New York, which hopefully we yeah playing we, at home. Yeah, we're, we're <laughs> you really play local. For. So you said about Juan Martin. He's the coach, but you have a lot of stars. Yeah. So how was that getting having that conversation, picking the players you wanted to have? Who are the players for those that are not following the league? Who are the players that you have in? The team. Yeah, so we have an amazing roster. Uh, we have guys like Paquito Navarro, uh, Fede Chingoto, uh, Rami Moyano, Lucas Campagnolo, uh, Nico Agritelli, mm -hmm. the number one in the uh, US, in the US yes. uh, which is a great addition to our team. And then on the women's side, we have Delphi Brea, uh, who's amazing, um, Tamara Icardo, uh, Virginia Riera, and uh, Andrea Ustera, 16 year old girl yeah. who's just unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ustero, yeah, it's, it's amazing. And also, I think Riera performed super well during this past leg. Like she was playing all the games, like the mixtos, the like female games, and she performed. I, I don't mean like I thought she wasn't that good, yeah. but uh, to me on the women's side, she was especially like bright. Yeah, very, very, very strong. I like it. And how was having Juan as a coach? I mean, Juan is just an amazing, amazing guy. Uh, yeah. Just as a as a human being, he's, he's just unbelievable to have around the team. Um, you know, obviously all the players yeah. respect him, so yeah. when he has something to say, they listen. Um, but you know, just in, in keeping the camaraderie of the team, building the team spirit, yeah. he's you know he's got the most energy of anybody. Always smiling, always laughing. Uh, he's yeah. really been a, an amazing addition. And um, I think it's important what you say about the team because usually. Paddle players are used to be like the minimal viable team, right? Just two people. Yeah. But and maybe when they play with their national teams and all that, they have that experience. But they are not used to performing as complete as teams. And I saw like the Arkansas doing thing, uh, the Miami team doing this. How did you build that team atmosphere? Yeah, it's been a really fun part of, of having the franchise is, you know, we go to team breakfast, team dinner, um, you know, you'll notice when the men are playing or the women are playing, the rest of the team yes. is, is on the bench watching, yes. cheering. Um, so you build that, that camaraderie yes. and the rapport, um, you know, it takes some time. Yeah. Um, but it, it's been really nice to kind of have that, that team spirit where we're, we're training together, we're, we're playing together, um, eating together. Wow. Um, and, and yeah, it's been, it's been, it's been a joy. And um, 
talking about business, because you come from a business background, especially tech, and um, I love that. So when I talk to tech people, many of them tell me, yeah, but this is a real estate business, it's not tech, or it's not related, like, this is not a good business when they think about Paddle. But you come from that and you are betting on this. Which, how, how do you see the, the business here? Yeah, from so, the content side, from the franchise, how do you envision this? So from, from the New York Atlantic's mm -hmm. perspective and, and the Pro Paddle League perspective, you know, ultimately we're a media property, right? So I think one of the amazing things about watching Paddle is it, it fits really nicely on your phone, yes. right? So all the highlights are, are really, you, yeah. you can watch the whole match, you know, on, on your iPhone if you wanted to. Um, and, it, and it feels just as good as watching it mm -hmm. on, on a TV. So uh, I think we're really interested in those sort of novel channels of distribution, mm -hmm. um, whether that's, you know, via Instagram, TikTok, all yeah. the social channels, um, the virality of the points yes. because they go on forever and people uh, get balls that you think are impossible for them to yes. get. So, you know, I think there's there's a lot you can do with, with the analytics side, the data side. Um, you're starting to see some of that with like AI cameras yes. kind of tracking the balls and, and how many unforced errors and yeah. how many smashes and winners. And uh, so I think there's there's actually quite a lot to do on the, mm -hmm. on the tech side. Obviously, when you're building clubs, that's more of a real estate yes. uh, play. But, um, you know, from a media property perspective, uh, I think there, there's quite a lot you can do. Yeah, I think the same, especially what you were saying about the stats. Plus, if it's seen out, I can believe sometimes that in a sport like this, some of those things are not as developed as they are in soccer or tennis, right? Yeah. Like there's so much that could be done that I can't believe that it's like that. Yeah, you have to imagine there's going to be a, a VAR, right? That, that comes into paddle pretty soon. Totally. And going back to to the US, the Propada League so far is just a US uh, theme followed by, I mean, worldwide. Players are mostly from Spain, Argentina, some from Mexico. So how do you see the expansion or potential of this league? Yeah, so the goal with the Pro Paddle League today is is bring the best players in the world to the U.S. and showcase the sport in its its best possible form here. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, to grow the sport over time in the U.S., we need clubs like this that are putting up courts. We need yeah. you know people as kids growing up playing paddle instead of tennis. Uh, instead of squash, that's going to take some time. Yeah. But it is really important for us over time to make sure that we have, you know, homegrown talent that yeah. we start building, you know, the the storylines, and, yeah. and eventually, hopefully, we have a you know a world number one player that's from New York. I think it's not that far, given how it's developing and watching in the past two years. If they told us that top ten players would come to the U.S. to play, no one would believe, and they were here for two weeks. Yeah. So it's been amazing. When, when we first got involved with the PPL, people told us repeatedly, no one that mm. is playing overseas will come here and play. And this year we've got 80% of the top 30 yeah. and almost all of the top 10. So it, it's been a really great start to, to building the league and I think the players are enjoying it. We have a lot to improve on, um, but I think it, everyone is seeing the opportunity that exists in the US. Yes, yeah, it's, and when the U.S. embraces something, the rest of the world dies. Yeah. Um, my last question before we get fried here under the sun, I feel like I'm in my I never thought New York. Yeah, I know. The, the, <laughs> uh, when you think about Paddle, which other business do you like to do? Like, I don't know if you're involved in clubs, in some other, I don't know, ideas or startups. Yeah, uh, so you mentioned technology, and that's another uh, area that we're, we're looking into pretty heavily. So uh, think about like the, in the infrastructure, whether that's analytics, ratings, rankings, um, uh, management for the, yeah. the clubs. I think there's, there's a big opportunity on the sort of software side to help yeah. um, accelerate the growth of Paddle here. Um, things are still happening you know, pretty manually, yeah. and I think there's an opportunity to, to automate a lot of what's going on. Okay, and how do you define yourself as a player? <laughs> uh, not as good as Juan Martin. <laughs> well, me neither. <laughs> I'm not as good as a 3.0. I'm fighting to keep yeah. my Playtomic 3.0 yeah, all the time. Yeah, yeah. The thing is, here I'm okay, decent. When I go to Spain, even a teenager kills me. So <laughs> I suffer a lot there. No, but it's a fun game and you can uh, always get better. Yes, and yes, it, you know, it, yes. it, you feel like every time you play, you, you, a little bit, you a can little bit. get a little bit better, yes. which is yes. all you can ask for. That's engaging. Too. Yeah. Thank you. It's been yeah. my pleasure. Thank you for having me.
Pues aquí el dueño del equipo de New York, de los Atlantics, nos ha ganado 6-1 con cruzado, pero vamos a hablar mucho de experiencia y es un tío súper majo. Así que let's go New York, vamos, como diría Marcos, vamos.